Radio Jack, are we live? Are we live? I see Productivity Ace. Got some killer questions already. Guys, I'm going to be totally honest here. This is this is pretty cool and it's pretty scary at the same time. We see a nasty glare going on here. Let's just tone some of these lights down. Ah, looking pretty. Paul, how you doing, sir? Just do me uh, a favor, Paul. How's the audio coming through? Because I can't, I kind of got it here. I kind of got it here. Are we sounding all right? Fine. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, welcome. We've got five people, it's looking like. Three people. We're bouncing them around. Uh, so cool to have uh, people checking this out all around the world. Um, yeah, this is just going to take me a minute to digest, guys. This is uh, intense. But I brought you here, or I've asked for you to come here, because we're going to talk a little bit between the differences between managers and leaders. And this is definitely going to be different than my videos, because we're not editing. Editing. Editing this. Copy time. So let's get into this. First thing I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is the difference between a manager and a leader. Now, I've got my list here that I, uh, I worked on, but... To me, the most important thing is that understand a manager is a title that somebody has given you. A leader is a title that, in my opinion, you take that title. Um, some of you may know I worked at a company for 17 years. I tried eight times to become a manager and I was denied seven. I kept going. I ended up becoming and, and earning that spot. But over the course of those 17 years, in my opinion, I was always a leader. I always had staff coming to me with questions. I always had other managers coming me to, coming to me with questions, with concerns or asking for my thoughts. So definitely the most important thing I'm going to say today is that, that a manager is a title that is given to you. It may matter to you. It may not matter to you, but a leader or a leadership position that's something that you make on your own uh paul what do we got here leadership can be demonstrated by graduates and can be absent in very senior folks a hundred percent i've worked with a lot of people that I, they they earn their management position i just don't know if they had the qualifications um because they were able to schmooze, they were able to network, or they had strong skills in the job that they had, but they lacked the leadership. And uh, for those that don't know, I've got Paul, uh, he's under Productivity Ace, he also has a leadership channel, and we kind of work back and forth, we chat back and forth. Um, this is where you're going to learn how to be a leader. Managing is very... I'm almost going to say it's easy to manage. You just follow what has been told to you. But to lead, that's something, in my opinion, it comes from inside. I, I can teach you. Yeah, Paul, please go get that management call. I ain't going to pay you to be here. <laughs> Got bills to pay. But let's jump into my list here. So a manager, a manager is going to tell you what has to be done. We need to do this. Your job has to be completed by this time. It's very straightforward. It's very matter of fact. But a leader, they're going to sell you on the idea. You know, they're going to say, listen, I have a great idea. This is what I need done. Because if I can come to you and if you can help me out here, this is going to put us at this position in our industry. They're very much more motivational. I mean, they're no Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> but they tend to get you excited to be working on the next project or the next whatever it is that, you, you know, whatever your, your work does. They make you feel like it's important and you are part of the team. You're not just a cog in the wheel as a manager tends to make you feel. And again, keep in mind that some of these traits, they're going to go back and forth. Um, you may have managers that can sometimes lead the team really well but they t may fall on, this is my management role. Uh, what do we got there, Paul? Good leaders make everyone feel important. Absolutely. 
And that's the thing. It's feeling important. It's feeling like you're part of the team. Um, and again, let's reference where I was working. At the airport. Come on, we got Kathy break. At the airport, we had a bunch. I'm going to be blunt. We had a bunch of shit managers. Okay. They were very, this is your job. You must do your job. Leave your job. Come do your work. Leave. Then I'd say in the last five years, they brought some people on board, some with leadership experience, some that worked with us as employees and moved up the chain, um, who knew how to talk to people or were willing to, and they were able to motivate the staff and they started doing charity, uh, not charity games, but they started involving, uh, we did baseball, we did basketball uh, tournaments where they brought everybody together and made people feel important, made people feel like they were part of a family, a dysfunctional family, <laughs> but they felt like they were part of a family. Um, the next thing, so let's go in. Managers, they tend to plan the details. This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it, okay? But a leader will set the direction. They'll set the tone for what has to be done, and they get you excited by it. Again, it's we all come from different backgrounds, but when I'm told to, this is what you have to do, do not veer off of this, you become brain dead. You, you lose a lot of what's going on up here, your, your creativity. Employees can have a lot of information for your business. And if you're a leader, you're going to listen to that. Set the direction and see how your team comes to steer the ship. Don't just be the captain barking orders. Um, and then to go further, the manager will instruct employees. Um, you know, they, they say, oh, if you don't know your job, here's the flow, ch flow chart. You need to do this. You need to do this. You speak to so-and-so. It's very, I guess it's very organized, but it's very cold, if that makes sense. Now, a leader will encourage people. They're going to make, they're going to say like, hey, Tom, if you've got a better idea on how this workflow is going, let me know. Because if it works, and we'll talk it over with the team, let's see if we can't make changes, if changes are needed to be made. Now, some people, some employees may take that and be like, oh, well, they didn't take my idea, so they don't value me. A leader will make sure that the employees understand, I want your feedback. I will not act on everything, but I will listen to everything, right? It's the same, you got kids? Well, I'm not going to do everything my kids are asking, but I'm going to do what I can. Paul, my friend, what do we got here? I like to give my team total autonomy to shape the work streams they are in uh, they are in charge of. That freedom brings great responsibility. They they're absolutely accountable as well. Yes. See, when their people are just told this is what you have to do, the accountability falls on you as the manager. If you bring your team in, and your team is saying, this is how we're going to accomplish this. I don't want to say as a leader, you can just sit back and it's easy street, but the steering wheel is in their hands. They have responsibility. They get from point A to point B, and they're more inclined to meet the targets because they set them. It's their excitement to be part of, I said I was going to do this. I wasn't told that I had to do it. I said I was going to do this. I need to do this. A lot of people have a fear of letting others down. And when you can hide behind the flow chart, the job description, you'd be like, that's my job. That's not my job. It's different than when they sign on to say, this is what we're going to do. Mike, we have this deadline. This is how we're going to accomplish it. So-and-so is taking care of the accounting part, the numbers. So-and-so is taking care of the, you know, development, the marketing, they've developed the team or they've, they've created what the team's dynamic is going to be. So they don't want to let you down. This is a great thing that leaders can do without really doing much. You just have to, you just have to make people feel like they're part of the team. So a manager has objectives. They lay out the plan and they want to stick to it. 
where the leader has a vision and they, they, they share it with employees. I find it weird. I'm looking at the camera. Camera one, camera two. If anybody's watched Wayne, <laughs> Wayne's World, camera one, camera two, camera one. Uh, Dre, the dream. How are you, sir? Thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate seeing you here. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. The leaders have a vision um, where they'll say, I, I like I like how you, what you have to say. You know, let's Dre, you came. Dre, I like I like what you're saying. Um, let's see if we can put that into action as opposed to just sticking to what a manager has as a plan. Because sometimes the managers, they get fearful. They don't want to veer off the beaten path because, uh, yes, sir, my first time catching your lives. Yeah, well, funny thing, Dre, this is the first live, so welcome. Hopefully it's not... Uh, Hopefully it's not going to be too boring because I can't edit out boringness. <laughs> Back into this. Managers. So they like to, they want to meet their expectations, right? So um, you have your goals for the quarter. If a manager meets it to them, job well done. And let me put this in perspective. I'm not saying that if you are a manager, it's the worst thing that you're doing. It's not. But we want to go from managing to moving forward and becoming a leader. You're, In my opinion, you're going to get so much more out of life, so much more out of work when you are taking on the responsibility to lead. You're taking on the responsibility to give people choices, to make them want to come into work. To make them want to get out of bed. Um, there's <laughs> That sounds like a lot of responsibility. But it'll be fun. And that's the idea. So a leader, instead of meeting expectations, a leader will chart their the, the company's growth. Um, they're going to say, this is our, our goals, our target. That's just the starting point, right? What can we go? What are our reach goals? Like, yeah, we want to do these many sales in a year or sorry, in a quarter. What happens if we get there early? Like, what could we strive for to make it better? You see? So now you, again, you got your team rising up to a challenge. I'm going to talk about me because listen, this is where we are. When I worked at the airport, there was no challenges. So you have 150 employees that go in. We had to make sure that the conveyor system worked. We had to make sure that a bag got checked in and it hit the plane. That's it. There's not a lot of thinking going on on a day-to-day. -day. So your brain can rot. You can start doing stupid things, making stupid decisions. But a leader will inspire you. And eventually we got to a point where it was, let's find out how can we make this system flow better? We've got, you know... 0.1% of bags not hitting the plane. Well, that means somebody's grandmother's not getting their bag. Imagine your grandmother not getting your bag. So leaders are able to inspire and put that in perspective. It's not just a bag. A manager says, okay, we lost 0.1% of the bags that went through today. Okay, that's not great. We need to make that, you know, better. A leader puts in a, it in a story. A leader will help you understand because imagine it was your grandmother that did not get her bags. You'd be heartbroken, right? Let me just catch up on the chat here. Uh, da, 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 da. On no, I'm a retired ar uh, da, uh, Dre. I'm a retired Army NCO. Not, I'm not sure what NCO. Let me know what that is. Um, and business management student. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Dre, you're retired. And now you're going back to school? Is that what I'm understanding here? That sounds intense. If I'm retired, I'm ready to retire. No, I, actually, if I can retire and do this, I can just hang out with you guys. I'm good with that. Uh, productivity aids. Paul, I work in financial services. We have a lot of veterans here working in key leadership roles. Of course, why would you not? Military people, one, can follow orders. Two, they know how to motivate. I can only, and I can only imagine <laughs> a bullet coming to my ass is going to motivate me to not get one in my ass. 
Um, Dre doing security until you finish school. Fantastic. Uh, Paul, I tend to be able to handle stress well. Yeah, good. That's why you're bald like me. Once you get rid of the hair, you got nothing else to pull out. <laughs> uh, one person I work with is Green in a crisis as he used to lead tank squadrons in Iraq. I can't even imagine, guys. Can't even imagine. Um, manager can say go. Leaders can say let go. Absolutely. Absolutely, Dre. That's exactly what I meant. Oh, uh, non-commissioned officer. Beautiful. So cool. So cool. That's a, you know what? Just veering off of this whole YouTube thing. The people that I'm able to talk with, I never would have done this when I was working at the airport. I never would have done this if I didn't start this channel. This is this is pretty cool. Okay, let's get in the, back into the differences between a manager and a leader. Managers, they see the problem. They see the problem and they get worried that if that doesn't get fixed, that they get the blame. The leader, they're going to see the problem. And it's kind of like, you know, making lemonade from lemons. You're going to see the problem and work with their team. Let's, how are we going to fix this problem? While we're talking about problems, what I think is a manager will go down on his team in the sense that, why did we fail? You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And then when they're talking to their upper management, their stakeholders, it is a, um, well, you know, we would have hit target, but Mike dropped the ball here. And then this guy didn't make his sales and the buyer wasn't right. It's excuses. When, when shit hits the fan, in my opinion, a leader says, I, I, I didn't get this done. I didn't handle this pr properly. I didn't talk to the buyer in advance. Blame should always be on the leader. Who we got here? Gra Gravin? Hey, buddy. How are you? Uh, and I got Paul jumping in here. Uh, remember, it's absolutely fine to be just a manager. Absolutely. Of course it is. Yes. Um, it's a hard job. Many people can't do it. But a leader, you need to nail the management bit and then add a lot more. That's exactly it. And I, and I want to make that clear, guys. Striving to become management is fantastic. Striving to level up is just adding that one more piece. And I, I believe that if you become the leader, people want to work out with you. You want, you, you want to work with other people. It just, it's a mindset. Attack the goal of becoming the manager. And then how do you be the best manager? You become the leader or a leader. And as I said in the beginning, a leader is not a title that anybody can give you. You have to give it to yourself. You have to earn it yourself. And you'll see as your peers start gathering around you, your peers start supporting you. Yeah, maybe you get a management position. But you get to make a lot of calls with your peers. They'll support you a lot quicker than if you weren't a leader in mindset. Um, tangent. Yeah, just went off on one. So yes, leaders assume the responsibility. Thanks, Trey. Because that's where I just lost my thought. Um, yes, the, the a manager, or sorry, a, a manager will push away responsibilities and faults. A leader will wear them. On the flip side, and I mean, we're talking in general terms when I say manager, because I do, I feel like I'm talking about it in a negative term, but we're talking stereotypical management ideals, management ways of doing things. And, and we're developing to be better than that, to be the leader. So in general, on the negative side, a manager will push blame, but they'll take all the credit. When things go well, they will take all the pats on the, on the back. They will take all the applause. A leader will take all the blame and they will not take the credit. They will push that to their team to make sure that stakeholders, upper management, the executive teams know who did what, how we succeeded. 
It was not because the leader did it. It was because the team did it. And that's a huge thing that I think I've had that done. And I'm like, wow, that's when I know I'm dealing with a stand up person. When the praise comes to me, because I was just technically a cog in the wheel kind of thing. Cindy, how are you, Cindy? Cindy, uh, what do we got here? A title means nothing. Exactly. It's just a title. Um, actions, follow, following through, setting the example and admitting when you are wrong is something that has inspired my people to be leaders themselves. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. That had nothing to do with me. Maybe me and you kind of chatted or you heard what I was saying, but this is your team. This is your group of people. You've done a great job. Um, and yes, title is just that. It's just a word that somebody gave you. Dre, what do we got? Uh, I only know from experience of being a leader and developing lower personnel in the military. Uh, it has required monthly evaluations, but it seems to be feared in the civilian world. Why? From my experience, I feel that anybody that I've dealt with doesn't really have training to do evaluations. Um, it's also when you're dealing with a manager in the sense of, in a disrespectful way. Like I don't respect you as a manager because you're always throw your staff under the bus. Um, I worked with one woman who, when as a, as a supervisor, she got in trouble by the stakeholders. She turned it on the control room operator. So the person just below as they were sitting there and they're dumbfounded. So to get a review or a, um, evaluation from her was meaningless because I, people don't, didn't respect that. On the flip side, I worked at a restaurant called The Keg and they would do um, biannually reviews. I always look forward to it because they were actually trained as a manager to be leaders and they were trained how to give constructive criticism, how to give feedback. Everything that I was ever set, told in those one-on-ones was true. If I was in the wrong, if I wasn't giving it all, they called me out on it and I respected them and I respected that feedback. So I think people are, people are also worried about getting in shit. Listen, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. But if you can, if somebody can tell you this was a mistake, Mike, now I can learn from it. So I think Sometimes people are just, they're, they're afraid of the truth, but the truth, the truth will set you free. <laughs> ah, so cheesy. Uh, what else do I have here? Oh, a manager, they approve of things. Yo, you did a great job and it was done on time. Very factual. Um, but a man, uh, sorry, a leader, they take that good job and they motivate it i knew i could count on you mike i'm counting on myself a lot these days i knew i could count on you you exceeded my expectations this is why when i get these kinds of projects the first guy that comes to my mind is you I'm still saying a good job but man you walk away feeling like i'm the guy i'm the guy behind the guy cindy what do we got uh most managers do not make time to check in with their people regularly yep so when there are evaluations, the team members are not comfortable with their manager to start. Open communicate, uh, open communication is key. Yeah, and see, that's another thing that, listen, when you get a management job, there's a lot of work that you have to do. You have to, you, res you have a lot of responsibility. You have to keep in mind though, your number one responsibility is your team regardless of how big or small. Um, so we have to keep that in mind because if I don't know you, then how am I going to evaluate you? I've never really had conversations with you, right? This is why it's important for a supervisor or a manager or a leader to go to the water cooler, go grab a coffee with people, make sure you have time to chat about work, chat about a project that's being done, chat about people's home life. I mean, don't get too nosy into their business, but when I know you and I, I, I have more constructive criticism that I can say, 
I may have higher expectations of you now because now we have one-on-one. -on -one. I know you, you know me. I'm expecting different things as opposed to employee 319427, right? Uh, but that's a, a great point, a great point. Bum, 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 bum. Ah, a manager, they will make decisions based on what makes sense. The numbers have to make sense. The personnel have to make sense. Everything has to be part of their agenda. And that's how they, do, they, they work on things. The leader, in my opinion, it's heart. What feels right? You know, there's something wrong about this project. We're missing something. How can we fix this? As a, as a manager or a, a supervisor might just look at, this is what we have to do. This is how it has to be done. A leader will feel if something's wrong or feel if something needs to be added. Um, Paul, you're in the dark. Oh, yeah. Wet London. And Cindy, San Diego. Carmen San Diego. Nice. Paul, what time is it in London? I know I've asked you before what our time differences are. Because we're at 11.26 a.m. I'm curious what... Uh, London is. Yes, I could Google it, but you're my Google buddy. Ah. So, final point in this managers versus leaders chat. A manager focuses on doing things right. This is the process. This is how we will follow. This is why you may be getting suspended this is why you may be getting promoted but it's all black and white a leader instead of does things right does the right thing i'm a firm believer the right thing is always the right thing so if it doesn't feel right if you feel like the rules are unfair then change them to make them fair. Hey, we got a bunch of people going on here. Baptiste, how are you, sir? I have been reported to my board of directors by several employees that decided that I was not good enough. Uh, I stick to my story, show my board of directors what was my strategy, and everything is fine now. Fantastic. You definitely, you have to advocate for yourself. I work with people and I don't know why they didn't like me. Come on. Who doesn't like this guy? I'm just kidding. Lots of people. But they have a perception of you or may. I usually, I, I'd like to know that. And I put my time into uh, why are your employees saying you're not good enough? It might be valid. It might be something that you can work on. And if your employees are not coming to you, but they're going above, I would be talking to them one-on-one -on -one and getting genuine feedback. Don't be angry. I mean, you might be a little bit angry, but don't show anger. But try to figure out what is it that you're missing? Because if they're right, that's great. That's, that's great feedback for you to work on. Make sure that you accept it. If they're wrong, maybe... You can chat with them and see why they see things that way. That is something that it's definitely, uh, it's interesting. It, listen, being a, a leader, being a manager, it's not easy. Having to go in front of the board of directors, that would not be easy, especially not on a good note. But if you stand your ground, if you know, like my, my final point was, doing the right thing is always the right thing. So Baptiste, I'm sure everything's fine now because you were doing the right thing for the right reasons. Um, who we got? Claus by Carrie. Carrie. Hello from Phoenix. Thank you, Mike. You are chicken noodle soup for my stress as a manager. I love those books. Chicken, uh, chicken soup for the soul. I've never been called that. That's, that's very nice. It's very warm and fuzzy. What else we got? Um, ba -bum. Oh yes, Paul's letting everybody know that uh, we have a collab coming out. 
And yep, whenever you're ready, Paul, we're good to go. Uh, Baptiste, it was change. I was new and starting to take change. That was the reason. Yeah. Um, how new were you when you started to make change? Change is always going to mess people up. Like, always. Um, I don't know why. Like, because I hate change. I Maybe uh, you guys have followed some of my videos where I explained that I worked at the airport for 17 years and because of COVID or because of, go because of government res regulations, however you think of it, I lost my job. I got a roof to pay for. I got two kids to feed and a wife who looks at looks to me as being an equal partner and bringing in some bread. That change was horrible for me, but it's been great because I'm now here doing a live chat with people from, I don't want to say all over the world, but man, we got some different spots over here. Um, taking me a while. Some of us <laughs> have our own fancy studios, but it, right? Right? I don't know if you guys saw over there that that's green painter's tape where I made my uh, own YouTube plaque. So when we get to the 100,000, you know what's coming down. Um, I also have way over there, there's a bottle of vodka. I bought that 10 years ago with the idea that I'm going to open this when I make a million dollars. I'm not at a million dollars. Maybe over the years I've made, but I have not put. So we've changed that. 100,000 subs. Guys, we're doing a live stream. That bottle's getting cracked. I've got some friends coming over. We're doing her live. We're going to have a party. I don't know if it's going to be in here. If it's me and just one or two friends, then we'll be in here. Um, but yeah, Baptiste, I'd really like to know how new were you when you started to change? Um, I don't know if I made a video about this or if I was going to. But change, especially as a new supervisor, it's I would I would definitely slow back. On if you're new, I'm talking like within the first couple of weeks, maybe even within the first two months. And sit and work with the employees, talk to them. Why are you doing it this way? Why have we always done it? It's not a fair answer. For them to say, well, that's the way we've always done it. Okay. But why? Does it work? Because you may see things as, as a supervisor or as a, a leader to say, this doesn't work. But if you haven't got your hands dirty, knowing why it doesn't work, it's going to be hard for people to want to take your word. Because I listen, I've had managers come and go at the airport. I'm here to change things. This isn't the way it's going to go. Buddy, but you've been here for four days. As soon as you want to change everything. But who are you, right? So to, to implement change, in my opinion, first start talking to the people that it's going to affect to see why. If people are resistant to change for the sake of being resistant to change, then guys, sorry, you lose. That said, I would take my time to make sure they understand. Yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so two months on the job, so it's still early, uh, but it was vital for the organization. So it may have been, again, obviously I don't know, I wasn't there. It may have been the delivery because people hate change. So it, just anything you want to change, just remember, everybody hates it, which means they hate you because you're the one bringing the change. How do you flip that? Talk to people. I wouldn't talk to them as a group. I would talk to them as in individuals to explain the to explain the um, why we need this change and try to get them on board individually, not in a group. Because when you do something in a group, it's very easy for people to hide behind the leader of the group and be like, mm -mm, mm -mm, we're not doing it. But when you talk to them individually, one-on-one, -on -one, most people tend to let their guard down a little bit and they will at least hear you. Um, they were three years without a proper management. Ah, yeah. And the fact that I was now the executive director coming from outside the community and country, that was not easy. Nope. We killed ourselves a lot of supervisors that came from outside of the airport or outside of our company within the airport. Um, 
but okay so but more were happy with me so hey yeah okay so tell me this you may have had just a few people going to the board of directors with a problem but if you had most people support you now go and just pick those people off one at a time that had a problem and try to get you might not but try to get them to see what why you're changing and how it's going to positively benefit them if they were running around the house with no parents i eat no management they had they ruled the roost you're coming in with rules nobody's gonna like that right but i, I like hearing that the um that you had more people happy with you that means you were bringing something of value Ah, da, da. where did we go in here miss i know i missed some some conversations with that blurb oh mike uh, Mike, what are your interests outside of YouTube and what do you do to relax? Ah, interests. So my number one, fishing. I have a small pontoon boat. I have two young boys and we will fish every morning in the summer. That is what I do to relax and that is a hobby that I have. Uh, in the winter... I got to get back into snowboarding. I'm out of shape and my kids are starting to want to get to the hills. So that's, that's kind of my thing. Um, that said, I know, I know you asked outside of YouTube. I'm loving this YouTube thing. Um, so I, Paul, you, you scuba, scuba diving with fish and fishing like spear fishing. Is that what you're talking about, Paul? Cause I've never done that. We do, Largemouth bass, that's the focus. Sometimes a musky, but I'll never say that I'm musky fishing because damn, I ain't gonna catch nothing <laughs> if I say that. Uh, Love SA did some awesome shark diving there. Paul, you're crazy. I ain't going nowhere with no sharks. Um, but yeah, so guys, I'm loving this YouTube. If I can, If I can push this and make this a career, which that's the goal, this will be my relax time because I'm learning every day and more and more is happening. Ba -bum -bum -bum. Yes, YouTube plaque. Yes, manifest it. That's the plan. That's why I put the uh, the tape on the wall because I need to see it. And that's why I put 100,000 subs. We're getting lit. Is that what the kids are saying these days? Lit. <laughs> uh, da -da. Let's see. Where are we here? Dre, back in 08 or 09, Starbucks. Uh, we're going to be out of business. The new C-suite personnel took the their manager's to Katrina Relief in New Orleans to get back to the company's vision and culture. Yes, and that is like very impactful. Especially as companies are going when they when they get bigger and it goes back to knowing your staff. Like how do you know everybody? You don't. It's it's tough talking to strangers. Something like that where you are able to get your your C suite back on track and then they are able to work with their direct reports and their direct reports and their direct reports. Uh, yeah, it's sometimes that's needed. It's a reset. It's just a reset. It doesn't have to be as intense as going to Katrina. I it sounds fantastic, but I mean, I'd take people fishing. <laughs> I don't know if they'd want to go, but I'd take them. Um, okay, let me catch up here. Where did I go? Yeah, Dre jumps in on the talk to people individually. Um, because group think mentality. Yes, the word I was kind of thinking of, but it just wasn't registering. Um, yes, group think can really be good and bad. If you're trying to change something and they don't want to change, bad. But if you're bringing something of value that they can see right away, you get that leader of the pack jumping on, they're in. They are in. Uh, okay, guys, I've kind of uh, said what I intended to say. We've been 40 minutes. I thought maybe I'd be here by myself for 10 minutes. This is fantastic. Um while we're here, anybody got anything they need they want to ask? I got I got a few extra minutes. I got a hot coffee. I am not sponsored by Yeti yet, but if you guys like your coffee hot, Yeti. If you like your beer cold, same Yeti. 
Again, not a sponsored post, but this is one of them things. Paul, I, I'm not sure if you get them. Um, I'm not sure if you get them in uh, your neck of the woods. It's an American brand. Also, do you miss the buzz of being an active leader in the work? Okay, sorry, I missed this. After your layoff, you're now a full-time YouTube content creator. Do you feel your lack of being in the game at a moment is dulling your skills? I don't think so. I think I would benefit if I, uh, there would be great benefit for me to be back in that position. That said, I'm always here watching videos, watching your videos, buddy, um, but watching videos, reading articles, reading books. Um, I have, so I have a hard time. I don't, I guess I wouldn't say my skills feel like they're getting dull. Plus for 17 years working at the airport, being with horrible management, being part of management, helping people, I believe helping people see the difference of leadership and management. I got a lot of built up stress. A lot of things that I want to say are right in here. Um, so I don't think so. Also, do you miss the buzz of being an active leader in the workplace? Yes, absolutely. Um, I really liked working with people. I find that there was a lot of people that I didn't like at work, or I, I guess that I just didn't mesh well with. I'm now realizing that I miss those SOBs. You know what I mean? Like it's a different relationship um, that you can you cultivate at work. And being with people for so many years, it's kind of needed to move on, but it's kind of sad, you know? So yeah, and, and being in the line of fire, but not really. I mean, it's not real, real guns. Um, where are we here? Oh, you get the cups. Okay, good. And plates from Yeti. From uh, Yeti. Because they got like really stupid expensive coolers here. They're like four, five, six hundred dollars. The one I want to stay in is steel. It's $1,100 US. I'm not getting that. Um, let me see here. Darduri. Darduri. I am always get new tasks to do from my boss, and I can't have the time to lead my team. What can I do? Uh, off the cuff, I would suggest you need to talk to your boss. Ask your boss what they think is your priority and explain why you need why you feel the need to be have touch points with your, your team. Um, I think I have a, a video with Melisa Canella. She was a senior activations manager. Um, check, check the channel. Uh, there's a, a playlist where she talks about one of her problems as a supervisor, as a leader, was not being able to say no. And when she learned how to say, listen, I can't, I'm getting overwhelmed. Her boss said, okay. It was that simple. It was like, okay. And for years, she'd been taking moron and moron and moron. Not calling her a moron. She's a good friend of mine. I would call her one. But she was taking on more work when she didn't need to. It was just the boss, her boss knew she was a good employee, knew she could handle the jobs that he was assigning. So it was a safe bet for him. But once she opened up and said, I can't do this, I'm overloaded, this and that. It was absolutely no problem. Not saying that'll happen exactly for you, but I would strongly advise have a conversation. A lot of things get fixed when we're chatting. Um, I think I saw a question up here. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Um, Paul, is this question for me? I think so. Were you always a skilled leader or was there a point where it just clicked? Was there a point when you really started to make progress as a leader and was there a particular catalyst to that? Um, I think, to be honest, I've always been a leader. I remember being like grade 10 and the drama teacher I was being a jerk with a couple other guys. And he pulled me aside and he was one of those real firm, 
hard ass teachers. And he said, but Mike, what are you doing? You know, these people look up to you. Now I'm six foot in grade 10. I was, I was five eleven. I need to, I wanted to be six foot for basketball, just a vanity number. Anyways, he said, you know, these, these guys look up to you. Why are you following them? And I joked being a smart ass that I was, I'm like, yeah, but I'm taller than them. That's why they have to look up to me. But it really brought to me like, yeah, you're right. All these people are listening to me. And then as I started um, working in the restaurant industry, I worked with a fantastic general manager who her work ethic, how she dealt with people, it clicked for me. And then it clicked more when she left. <laughs> and the one replacing wasn't even close. Um, so yeah, I think I've always kind of, I've always been very stubborn in my own opinion of what is good for me. I don't, I never cared what the crowd was doing. Um, I kind of fit in with everybody, you know, high school has all the clicks, the cool kids, the losers, the chess club, the, the jocks, the potheads. I was at one with all of them leaned more towards the jocks. I'm a natural athlete. If you didn't know, um, thanks for the question. Uh, Cindy. Have you ever had to work with another person in management that actively discourages the team? How do you handle this if that person is above you? Uh, I have. And how do you handle it? Gently. I was training at the airport. Um, a great guy was my supervisor and I was... Um, acting an acting coordinator i think they called it and they i have a video where i'm talking about this coming out every day he would write on the board dilagaf d-i-l-l-a-g-f what that means is it's the acronym for do i look like i give a and i'll let you i'll let you fill in the last f um it was funny his attitude was like that but it really set a horrible tone for the team because if the supervisor doesn't give a fruit fly, why do I? And it was one of those things where I had to, because I am confident in who I am and my opinions, <laughs> and I have many and some are wrong and some are right and some whatever. Um, I had to pull them aside. I don't want to say pull them aside like hey, you need to come to dad, but I had to pull him aside to explain my point. And um, he understood. He got it. He also went and put a UFC fight on. So we were, we had literally 20 monitors bigger than this screen here that showed how the airport baggage system was working. And he shut one of them down to put a, a I don't even remember which one, but a popular UFC fight on the screen and then he took a picture of it and then he posted it to Facebook <laughs> and one of the airport supervisors saw it and it was big, big trouble for him and for I, because all of a sudden I'm an acting coordinator. I'm supposed to make these kinds of decisions. So I think that actually stunted my ability to get hired for a few of the management rounds because the HR guy said I should have done more. But it was my boss putting it on TV. That, you know, how do you how do you say that's a dumb idea? That said, I should have. And uh, yeah, how do you deal with grumpy people? Hey, grumpy people, I'm grumpy, <laughs> but I can be grump. I can be miserable, right? I think we all can. If you're if somebody's grumpy around me, if it's one person, I usually try to buy them. Now, huh? what do you mean by? I'm buying, I'm buying coffee. Listen, John, what do you want? I'm going for coffee. You want coffee? No. Come on. Listen, you get one opportunity. Usually, people will jump and have a coffee. From there, moods usually lighten. Um, never underestimate the power of a dollar fifty coffee or whatever. Don't go Starbucks. I mean, use Starbucks. Okay, now never understand, underestimate the power of five dollar coffees. Um, but a gift, it's a gift that people feel they need to reciprocate. And sometimes that's just done by not being a grump. Um, if it's affecting your team and the overall team morale, 
you may have to pull them aside and have a, an honest and open discussion about it. Um, they may be grumpy because there's a lot of stuff happening in the world, right? You, you, we don't know what happens to people behind their closed doors. You may think that they have a perfect life and they're miserable as hell because they hate their husband, they hate their wife, they hate their kids, they hate their dog, whatever it might be. Um, but I would definitely, if you buy them off with a coffee, great start. If it's more intense than that and it's affecting the team dynamic, I would definitely sit down and have a chat and um, <laughs> don't say you're a miserable SOB. What's your problem? Bring it up as, you know, I've noticed you don't seem to be happy. And I just, you know, is everything okay? Is there anything that we can do as a team that we can, you know, support you with? You can't script it because then it sounds cheesy, but I hope you, I hope you get the idea with that. Um, Dre, I don't know if I am wrong or just different, but I do my beat at incorp best at incorporating group activity and a monthly family engagement day. I think these spark productivity. Absolutely, they do. So that airport that I spent most of my life at, they did nothing. But they were wondering why employees were disenfranchised, were not feeling like they're part of the team. They didn't foster a team. Then we got a guy who has a military background and he was doing, I, I guess every other month, doing events. If you weren't working on shift, you weren't expected to be there, but it was very much promoted. We did a basketball tournament. We did a baseball tournament. I want to say they did bowling. Like some really, they, they had pizza parties. Listen, we're not five years old. We can't get overly excited by pizza, but I tell you, people get overly excited by pizza. And it's a time, it, you break bread, right? It's a time to, to not necessarily talk shop. You're having lunch, enjoying some pizza, some pop. Real pop, not beers, like actual pop. I wish it was beers. <laughs> but it does spark, I don't want to say family, but you get, you get to know people. You get to see them outside of work or outside of their cubicle or their own little minds so yeah it, definitely dre keep doing that i'm sure your team loves it um and when you can get families involved because i also find there's one guy that i let's say I, I really didn't like him at work why i don't know but what changed for me was thinking he's a dad i'm a dad and then I saw him with his kids. I'm like, you know what? He's a good dad. There's a different respect that you, when you see people, go, going back to the group mentality, people can talk foolish. They can act foolish in front of their colleagues. But when you see them outside of the work and you see them in their, I don't want to say their natural environment, but with their families, how they interact with their families, you can really learn a lot about somebody and gain a lot of respect. If they shit to their families, you can lose respect. But now you know why you don't like the guy. <laughs> um, Cindy, you got to go. Thank you for coming. I think I'm going to do this. I, I don't know how often I'm going to do this, but um, this was fun. Uh, Paul, uh, where am I? have you been in a situation where even with all you know about leadership, it was lost cause and you weren't able to succeed? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, some people are just thick. Some people are just assholes. It's tough and I hate losing. But some people you just gotta cut them off. It's, you know, you try, um, you try to lead to a positive outcome. Some people will have none of it. It could be my delivery. It could be my attitude. It could be my history. It could be so many things. It could be that they want the position that I'm in. They like the other guy better. I'm too abrupt. I'm too, you know, it's very, I had a team that was actively working on it to get me fired. It was an impossible situation. Yeah, it happens. And I hate to say this, but I've been on a team that's actively tried to get a supervisor fired. But here's the thing, 
and I'm, I'm sure this wasn't your case, but my case, this supervisor was doing stuff that was jeopardizing my job. Now it comes down to, am I going to eat or are you going to eat? Oh, I'm going to eat. So we're going to find a way to get you out of here because you're affecting, you're affecting everybody's daily lives at work. This person was affecting our outcomes in a negative manner. This person was talking to our stakeholders, making us look like we could all be, we can all be replaced, but making it look so horrible that I was hunting. I was hunting. I'm not proud of it, but at the same time, I was there for another 10 years and he wasn't. That said, I know from your videos that I don't think you are, I don't think you're a deadbeat manager. You know what's going on. Um, so that, that would be a hard pill to swallow. It, I would not want to be on the firing range. Um, I've never had where people try to get me fired, but um, Dre, wow, people actively try to get people fired? Yeah. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And I mean, also look at it. I have a video with different cultures. I think a buddy was, I want to say he was Pakistani or Indian. Um, and how they get ahead? I got to knock this guy down. And that's how he tried to get moving up in the company. He, we had to explain to him, that's not how it works here. How it works here is you do a good job. You go above and beyond. Like, you know what I mean? Like actually doing your thing as opposed to knocking down the next guy. So you have the tallest building, so to speak. Um, has anyone had any effective outcome with role reversal in organizations to mitigate them doing that? Um, explain, what do you mean by role reversals? Pretend they're the supervisor? Uh, Paul, the ringleader, was someone who wanted my job. Aha. And I got promoted before him. He didn't like it. Yeah. That, if it's me, I, we're having one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe even having a chat with our direct supervisors because I'm squashing that right away. I tend to be a little bit more bullish or blunt when I'm feeling somebody's coming at me unfairly. And I'll call it out very quick. Hey, Mike, thanks for all your videos and sharing knowledge. Uh, Christian, no problem. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming here. Um, wow, we're getting up to 57 minutes. Jesus. Jeepers. <laughs> um, actively putting them in those roles, I meant. Yeah, temporarily, of course. No, I've never done that. What I have done, when people haven't liked my ideas... Um, sorry, pause the thought. Paul. <laughs> I'd love to come to London, but I lost my airport job because people aren't flying anywhere. So we may have to go ahead with the Zoom. And then one day, uh, I don't want to say when we hit the 100,000 mark, but when we get a million subs, I'd fly to London without question. Uh, Dre, what I've done is when people don't like my answer or my strategy, again, this isn't a group thing. It's usually a one-on-one because -on -one there's always a ringleader. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? How do you want to see this done? Right? Even even happening with politics. We're not getting into a, po a political chat here. But Canada is ha handling COVID this way. The U.S. is handling it that way. Everybody has an opinion that they're doing wrong. What would you do? How would you fix this? So going back to my work. How are you going to fix this? Because you don't like my ideas. And as a, because you're a leader and you're open and you're honest and you're willing to take feedback, what would you suggest is the best way to handle this? And wait, like that, like quiet. Give them an opportunity. So if they don't have an answer, so what the hell are you making a ruckus for? You don't have an answer either. This is the best that I have. If they do have an answer and it's good, take it. Bring them on. Help make them part of the change, part of the solution. They take ownership of it. One, it also takes you out of the firing range because now you and so-and-so are bringing this to the group. He's a target too, but he's an employee, so he gets more favors. I at least where I've worked. 
Corporate politics, no chance. I hate politics. I mean, it's all around, but I try to be very... Actually, I've got, um, I think next week, the video comes out where uh, mistakes that new managers make, politics. Um, I believe that the, lo the longer you're in your position at your job, and the more solidly grounded you are as an individual, my experience is politics has usually left me alone. Maybe I didn't climb uh, the ladder as quickly as I could have or should have, but I slept well at night. Um, anybody that was trying to backstab me, I would deal directly with them. Um, but yeah, okay, great, I like that. Gives them a sense of responsibility. Absolutely it does. And it's, it's part of developing your team and bringing the leaders out of the employees. And now it's, it's especially for you, you're an army focused on one target. You're not fighting within and missing your, your actual job, what you actually have to do, right? Um, um, did I miss anything? I look forward to the Zoom. Yeah, well. Paul, this has been the best hour of my entire week. Thanks, buddy. That makes me feel great. We are still at 12 people watching now, and we have six likes. This is fantastic. I'll be honest. I kind of only thought Paul was going to be here. Um, so I'm thrilled. I think it's, we got as high as 16 people watching consecutively. Um, that said guys, said, guys, it is noon where I'm at. So I'm going to have to shut this down. I will strongly consider doing another one of these because uh, it was fun. Um, maybe in the comments afterwards or now, I don't even know how that works, but does this time work? Is there a better time? Because I'm looking at my YouTube stats and it kind of said most of your um, subscribers are on or on YouTube at this time on a Friday. Um, but yeah, everybody, I appreciate you. I appreciate the time we share. I appreciate feedback, uh, good and bad. Um, that's it. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm going to finish my coffee. That's a lot of talking. I, I might even crack a beer for this. We're going to celebrate. Um, yeah, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to see you in the next video, right? And stay tuned for when we are going to have our next live. Uh, da -da. I don't even know how to. <laughs> how do you show